What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna be making some custom stickers for our Lego city. And it starts right now. You all may remember, when we first started our city last year, we made our own custom sign for display in the city center. It was nothing complicated. I just made it with a label maker that I have at home. Making labels for stuff is super awesome. If you guys haven't already, you should definitely try it. I think it's super fun. It's been one year since we made that sign, and now that New Brickerton has celebrated its one year anniversary, I think it's time we give this a little upgrade. Not only was that sign a very basic solution, it also doesn't even really look that great, and I'd love to create something that's of a bit better quality for our LEGO city so that our citizens can truly be proud of it. So, you may be wondering, how am I planning to make these stickers? For Christmas last year, I got my girlfriend a cry cut. If you're like I was last year, you may be wondering, what is a cry cut? This is a cry cut. No, this is not an ad and this is not sponsored by CryCut. I just like to make things a little bit dramatic sometimes. <laughs> so what is this thing? Simply put, it is a cutting machine. You can make stickers, t-shirt graphics, a bunch of other cool stuff with this thing. So I'm thinking I may be able to use this to print out a few vinyl stickers for the city. I'm thinking about a new town sign, some street signs, maybe a sign for the beach, maybe a billboard. And I am super excited about this project. My girlfriend, Abby, has used this cry cut a bit. She says it's not super hard. I have never used this thing before, so throughout the course of this video, I'm gonna be learning exactly how to make my own stickers with the cry cut. I'm gonna be applying them to my Lego pieces. So if you're someone who's just interested in seeing the finished product, seeing the final stickers without all the buildup and the process of doing it, you can go ahead and go to the timestamp on the screen or you can click down in the description to skip forward to the point where I reveal the final stickers. For the rest of you that are sticking around, let's go. Oh look, this is just in. We've got a uh, we've got a monster in the water area. New Brickerton Harbor is currently under attack. If you guys are in New Brickerton right now, we ask you to please seek shelter. This is not a drill. I repeat, it. this is not a drill. There is actually a gigantic cat monster. Uh oh. Where'd she go? She gone now. All right, we're safe. State of emergency has passed. We are back in business. All right, so step number one is we need to design these stickers and figure out exactly how big we need to print them so that they fit nicely on our pieces. So this is what we're looking at here. We've got this big uh, billboard piece here. I'm not exactly sure what this is called. I think it's just a modified tile and it's got the studs around the side. And then we've got a two by four tile, a one by four tile, and then we've got these green one by tiles too, which I thought would work perfectly as street signs. I attempted to use the label maker to make street signs on those green tiles before, but it just doesn't look very good. Um, you can just tell it's cut out. I think that the stickers we're making for the new street signs, I think they're gonna look a lot better. So what we're gonna do is measure these, then we're gonna go onto the computer, we're gonna create our designs to the proper specifications, then we will load these designs into our uh, CryCut software, and we're gonna try and cut them out. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. Okay. 
So I got through measuring only that first piece before remembering that Lego bricks were patented in 1958 and they haven't changed. So obviously someone has measured them before I did. One Google search was all it took to find out the dimensions. And if you were just curious, it turns out that each Lego stud adds eight millimeters to the piece's dimensions. So I opened up a fresh Adobe Illustrator file and I made a few different templates for the pieces that we were wanting to use based on these measurements. I mocked up a billboard, street signs, a town center sign, a beach sign, all of that stuff I've mentioned already. Um, I wanted to include some imagery too. So we've got the classic Lego brick and a minifigure head. I wanted to create some additional Avengers Tower signage, so I added the Avengers logo. Please don't come after me, Marvel. And you guys know we had to incorporate our cat squid, so I made a Beware of Cat sign as well. I think this is a solid selection of designs to start out with for this project. It's finally time for us to give a shot at loading these designs into the cry cut and cutting out our first stickers. I'm gonna show you guys my setup here. All right, so we've got our designs here loaded up on the software, connected into the cry cut. The way this thing is gonna work here, this is our cutting head right here. Um, you'll see there's two different heads that you can use, um, and it's gonna move back and forth. We've got a few different color of vinyl. We've got a few colors here. Then we've got our transfer tape, our black, and our white. So I'm gonna figure out how to get this vinyl loaded in. All right, we've got this piece of black glossy vinyl in here. Um, what I didn't realize, we need to press this button. Just loads it in. I think we're ready. Now we just gotta press the go button, baby. All right, here we go. All right, we're in business, baby. So we got our first ever sticker done here. It's not perfect, but overall I'm pretty happy with it. With our first successful sticker out of the way, it was time to dive into the rest of them. Another thing to remember is that we're basically just cutting this vinyl out with what's essentially a really precise tiny razor blade so you can't add too much small or precise detail to the designs it's not a laser cutter that was a lesson i had to learn firsthand the initial batch of stickers that i made it just had way too many small elements and once you get down to anything probably smaller than about a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch you start losing accuracy with your cuts you start losing fidelity in your details on those small letters I mean, it just doesn't look as good Another thing that's unique about these vinyl stickers is you have to weed the vinyl. And basically what weeding the vinyl means is after the vinyl is cut, you still have to use tools to remove all the excess vinyl that you don't want on your design. So when I was trying to create these signs, the small letters, especially on the street signs that I had initially planned on using were such an absolute headache to weed out of the vinyl and on some of these it took so long and i ended up having to completely rebuild the words from scratch because those tiny little letters would not stay where i wanted them to and that was such a pain um, at one point i accidentally put my palm onto the street signs that i was working on i pulled my palm up and there was just stickers littered across my skin and i was like oh my god so that completely ruined any chance of that batch let me tell you i was not happy about that i had to completely redo it from scratch knowing that some of our elements were too small i tried my best to make every sticker as big as it could possibly be i went back and forth between my computer and my little vinyl workstation I created. I spent literally hours weeding vinyl, testing our designs, seeing how they look. And after a few days, I finally got to a point where I could apply the vinyl stickers to our Lego pieces. 
This is the moment that we've all been waiting for, myself included. Let's go ahead and take a look at those finished stickers. We accomplished our goal of refurbishing the town sign and adding some nice additions around our city. We've got our new billboard, we've got some street signs, we've got a sign for the beach. We turned the beware of cat sign into some graffiti, warning of the cat, which it's obvious that that's needed considering how often the town comes under attack from the giant cat monster. And <laughs> our Avengers headquarters got a little makeover as well. I have some more plans to renovate that Avengers area, hopefully in the near future. So this is gonna really help improve the quality of that area and that building once it's done. I did some other test stickers um, like this minifigure. Um, I think there's a lot of potential here for adding some detail, some art, some immersiveness into the city. And I'm really excited about basically the door that this is opening for us. I mean, we can add a ton of different stuff to the city. So I wanna hear from you guys down in the comments. What are your suggestions for different stickers that I should put into the city? Um, I will be choosing my favorite suggestions from the comments and adding them to the city in a future video. So if your suggestion gets chosen, I will give you a thick shout out on the channel. So let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to subscribe so that you do not miss out on future Lego content. And if you make us a good suggestion, you don't wanna miss out on your name being read on this channel. <laughs> So before we go, a quick debrief on this project. I'm overall satisfied with the results. It was a really fun experiment and I will definitely be continuing to create vinyl stickers and adding them to the city when I can. I'm not surprised at all that the cry cut couldn't quite keep up with the small cuts that I was wanting it to make. I knew there was limitations. I knew that we might hit those limitations, but I'm still not super jazzed with how the street signs look. I think they look a little bit like I cut them out like when I was a child with scissors, <laughs> but I do have an idea how we can refine that going forward. The next thing that I wanna look into is using an actual printer to print out some of those smaller details like the street signs. Overall, I think that's gonna be a lot easier and look a lot nicer. And the way I was going about it just wasn't necessarily the easiest way to do it. I was really creating extra work for myself, but I didn't realize that until I was hours deep in my basement, just like weeding vinyl out of this. Oh my God. <laughs> so I'll include the products and software that I used to create this project down in the description if you're looking to do that yourself. The cry cut itself was the biggest expense between the machine and the vinyl and the transfer tape. It'll probably run you like about $200 which is about the cost of a new modular building. So I don't know if I didn't already have this machine, you know, it's like modular building stickers, modular building stickers, you know, I don't know. I think most of us know what we would choose in that situation, but that's the reality of being a Lego fan. So before I go, yes, it is supposed to be pronounced cricket, apparently not cry cut, um, which makes sense. I didn't know that before filming this and I just stuck with it. So I hope you guys found that enjoyable. I hope you thought that was funny. It's cricket, 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 if you guys don't know. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Uh, I will catch you in the next one. Peace. Who would have thought it? Who would have thought it's called cricket? It's like, it's not like it has like, it's not like it has a bug, like icon or something. Like, who would have thought? It's like cry cut. It's obviously, cr nope, it's cricket. They don't tell you that in school. But, you know, some lessons in life, you know, you can't, you can't learn them in school, you know? I've literally been doing this for two weeks and, uh, I don't know. I feel like I learned a lot. I feel like it was hard, but it was fun. 
it was some of it was easy the actual cutting part was easy because the machine does it so like that was chill that was cool um looks like we're about out of memory on the camera new brickerton signing off yeah all right i think that's it peace